What does Ligia Mladenova say about the results in History Makers uh, being present there? History Makers Academy launched a, a new period in modern history of awakening, restoration, and mobilization. In just four years, we have seen the biggest transformation of personal lives and real steps towards the transformation of our nation. That is absolutely true. Let me show you a few stories today. Now, one of the things that we do as a History Makers Academy is we train and equip leaders to become catalysts of transformation in their sphere, within the, the seven mountains of society. Every sociological sphere should be impacted by the kingdom of God. We train them in a specialized, choreographed environment, three-day intensive training, which you already heard about, the details of that, of why it's so effective. And uh, then they go through an eight-week follow-up process where they, they've got a little bit more mentoring. We attach the mentoring component to it. Then they go through what's called a two-day launch pad, and they're launched and formed. They form these council groups called transformation councils. Essentially, they're like cell groups, uh, seven mountain cell groups, you could call them, where each person, each individual in that group, that cell group, has been trained through our systems. They're highly trained. They're like the Navy SEALs <laughs> for the Kingdom of God. They're highly trained and they uh, know their sphere of society and they create projects, ministries, social works, uh, strategies to go in and transform the community or the nation. And so we, we have produced these transformation councils throughout Bulgaria and they are the real secret sauce in how we're having such influence. It becomes like a church without walls. And so uh, here we have a photo of, I think this was our first transformation council in Bulgaria. I happened to be there in Bulgaria at the time, so I was speaking at it, and there they all are. Each of those leaders knows what they're called to do. They've created projects and ministries to go and affect change in the society, and it's so powerful because every church can have a seven mountain cell group right in uh, in their church that does the heavy lifting of societal transformation. Small is the new big. You don't have to mess with the Sunday morning experience. You don't have to turn the church upside down. Just work with a, a small group like this and they go in and create such societal change, which you're gonna hear about. So there's a photo of that right there. Now, in one of our transformation councils, and some of these pictures are taken from our recent Beyond the Four Walls conference. Our Beyond the Four Walls conferences, basically, we bring in speakers, powerful praise and worship, kind of your standard conference model, and but we major on, even to the point of asking the main speakers to keep their topic to like a half hour, because we major on testimonies from average individuals doing above average work beyond the four walls, and... Uh, and, and, and those members of councils throughout the country, these seven mountain cells. So here's a couple right here. I love these guys. They're from the main city in Bulgaria. Uh, they created something to do with a TV show. You know, I wish they were here to tell you themselves, but we got lots to show you, lots to show you here. But they created a TV show and uh, as well as a business. And here they are at the conference saying, look, we have our destiny. We know what we're to do. We attend a church for years, but here's how we are impacting society. And when they were giving the testimony, it was just so powerful. So there they are, good looking husband and wife. Now look at this kid. <laughs> this is mind blowing. This guy took the history makers training, went through the process, and he created something like TED Talks. I think it's called TEDx. And, uh, and you see, I don't even know all the details of these ministries because there's so many springing up. I can't even keep track of it. But you'll be hearing from Ligia, the director, later on uh, live. We'll be interviewing her. You'll get to hear about the details of this. But look at this. He actually has this show out. The nation is watching. And he, he cleverly deals with almost secularized topics of interest and national topics, topics that are just interesting to people in the country. But then he slides in there like kingdom principles and, 
and really he brings the kingdom of God to media and there he is like such a young guy I think he was only like 19 or something when he launched this I remember him in the training I didn't know what he could do but when these guys when when the laborers are properly trained and equipped <laughs> When the kingdom of God is properly infused into somebody's DNA, they become a history maker, I'm telling you. They become a world changer. And here's one of them right here. So exciting. Love that kid now. Fasten your seatbelts for this. You see this woman over my shoulder. You see her now, how she looks, how she dresses. She was not always that way. This is a gypsy woman, Roma, Roma woman. And she even, after she came through the History Makers training, even like when she went through the process, even her physical appearance changed. <clears throat> the inner transformation, the power of the Kingdom of God was so powerful. Now, there is a reason why some people have trouble believing History Makers Academy stories. And that's why we try to document as much as we can, because they're so amazing. And that's why we call it the ultimate result-oriented machine. And this is actually the power the Kingdom of God has when it's properly and strategically organized and infused into the human being. <laughs> I feel like preaching right now, but, but let's just keep going here. This woman, she didn't even read well or write well. She didn't know how to use a computer. She didn't know about email. She came, she took the History Makers experience, and she basically said, Lord, I want you to use me. And God spoke to her during the training that she would one day be the director of like a rehabilitation center or program. She didn't know how that could be possible. She just said, Lord, okay, use me. And he told her, begin to serve the least of these. Begin to reach out to the poor. And you know what she began to do? She began to clean toilets. She began to like, like she went as low as she possibly could. And this eventually turned into, not only did she learn how to use a computer, brush up on her English and language skills, but she went to school and got a degree in psychology, okay? <laughs> and, and at the last conference, she had gone on to get another degree in family something, and she opened her rehabilitation center for the homeless and the broken. I mean, you couldn't have dry eyes as you listen to the story. We're just weeping there, seeing what happened to this woman after she went through this process. And I think she drives a Mercedes now or something. So, so anyway, she took her Mercedes and she went to the least of these. And, and I love it. She said, uh, I thought that I would be this psychologist or this counselor sitting in an office somewhere and people would come to me. But instead, God sent her to them. Isn't that how God does it? And so now, take a look at this photo. This is actually a before and after photo. It's not very clear to see, but you'll see on the left side of the screen, that's a woman, one woman. On the left side of the screen, she was living in plastic bags wrapped up like that in a forest. This is in Bulgaria. She was living like that in her own feces, in her own urine, and just absolutely like broken broken in every way. Well, the woman I just showed you, this woman, she went directly to the least of these, let me tell you, because that's what we teach them to do in History Makers, is to make history from the lowest all the way up to the top echelons of society. So here's the before and after. This lady picked her up in the car, put her in the back seat, smelling like all kinds of stuff, and took her and began to walk her through the rehabilitation process. Amazing things began to happen. Not only did the woman give her life to Christ, but she began to laugh again. She began to smile again. And she went through some significant, I don't have documentation for this, but some significant level of mental health, mental healing is what happened. And uh, she was totally transformed and she was just, she, she got a personality, but not only that, when they picked her up, her hands, if you look on the left side of the screen, you'll see black. That is from fr fr uh, the frostbite. She had gangrene. Those fingers are dead, okay? That woman right there, just dead. They took her to uh, 
a number of doctors to try to get those fingers amputated and no doctor would touch her because she smelled so bad at the time. And so finally they got a doctor who would do it and when it came time for the appointment, the doctor didn't show up. <laughs> so they were so disappointed that this woman <laughs> took this woman every day during the rehabilitation process, laying hands on her hands. Ooh, I feel some emotion here. Because I was there in the con, like I know how real this is. We know about this woman. We know what happened. And, and every day, praying over this woman and her hand miraculously was healed. This is a total, this is a miracle. This is an absolute miracle because when they're dead like that, all you can do is amputate. It's poison. It's done. That's it. And this woman, this is, I'm calling this a creative miracle. And, and that's the power of process. Even the power of a healing process through a, a consistent process, an environment. Look at what happened. Totally healed. Totally restored. Powerful, powerful testimony. I wish I could spend more time on it. So anyways, this woman has gone on to continue to do her ministry there in Bulgaria. And I, I think she's partnering now with the government on some level. It's just so powerful. It's the kingdom of God visiting the nation.